Anchorage Park Foundation. Lee Hart uh, sends her apologies. She is uh, had to step away to another Lunch and Learn presentation that she's giving today. So um, the Alaska Outdoor Alliance hosts these uh, Lunch and Learns um, throughout the year. And so keep posted, sign up on their uh, YouTube page or their website at, at Alaska Outdoor Alliance for more information about that. We're gonna talk about the park bonds and trails usage today. Nicolette Dent with Anchorage Parks and Recreation will introduce herself and start, and then I'll follow up with some stories about the people behind the bonds and tell you a little bit about what the Anchorage Park Foundation does to help promote the bonds and support parks and trails projects throughout Anchorage. Thank you for joining us. Yes, thank you all for sharing your lunch hour with us. So my name is Nicolette. I'm a recent addition to the Parks and Rec planning team. I just joined at the end of 2020. And um, right around when I, when I joined, we got to talking in our team about just kind of this moment with COVID and the pandemic and how it's really heightening awareness to parks and trails as a resource for folks during this time. And you know, there's been lots of discussion swirling about more trail use, more people out and about um, as things were shut down indoors. So I'm just gonna um, kick it off with a little description of a survey we did um, and about uh, trail and park use during COVID-19 and also some of the kind of trail data we have access to here in town and what's, what story that is telling. So hello, if you're just joining us, we're just uh, getting started. And just to let you all know, this, uh, we are recording this meeting. All right, so as I mentioned, um, you know, people are talking about this, that trail and park use has been trending upwards during COVID um, and really just in the last few years here in Anchorage. Um, so the, you know, some we have national data and national discussion show this, but locally, we, locally, we also do some trail and park counts um, to keep track of what's going on. So the recreation team manages some counters out at Kincaid Park, and they shared some of this data with us. So um, this is average daily traffic at the Mize Loop, which is a, if you're not familiar with it, it's a, a relatively easy uh, cross country ski trail in the winter and then a multi-use in the summer. Um, so this is average daily traffic. So um, throughout the entire year, going back to 2017, and you can see that um, you know there was a dip in 2019, but then 2020 really went up. And um, if you look, you know, get into the data a little bit more, you can see that you know um, post COVID times, there's definitely a little bit of a noticeable trend upward. So um, we're seeing this uh, in town. We're also seeing this. Um, in the BLM, BLM Campbell Tract and Far North Bicentennial Park area. So um, BLM works with us really closely um, and shares uh, data with us as um, you know, we kind of co-manage the area where trails go in and out of Far North Bicentennial Park and the Campbell Tract. Um, so they have counters um, kind of circling the Campbell Airstrip and so this is annual visitors to the area um, going back to 2003 and you can just see it's really exploding since 2010 I think we calculated there's that it's showing a 250 percent increase for this this area of town um, in the trail counts and in the in the yellow there on the right you see just if things continue as they have been what the projected growth might look like for this year for trail users and uh, visitors to the area so we're really thankful that BLM's willing to share that data with us and um, wanted to share it with you all just to frame our discussion about trails and parks as really important infrastructure. Um, the other area in town we do collect data, um, the traffic department with the Muni has some uh, permanent trail counters. You may notice posts along the, the Moose Loop. So Campbell Creek, Chester Creek and Coastal Trail have these counters out there and they're always collecting data and that's published annually in a report by traffic. Um, so it usually comes out in the summer and we're, you know, anticipating to see um, see that increased use with COVID. And um, they traffic does a lot of cleaning of their data to make sure it's really accurate, and we appreciate that. So uh, stay tuned for that more um, of that data in the summer. So you know, with all this knowledge of what's going on and increasing trail use, our team wanted to make sure we were documenting this time and this moment and 
learn how the COVID pandemic was really changing people's use of parks, trails, and rec centers in Anchorage. So we put out an online survey, um, you know, blasted it through social media, community councils, um, assembly members, and many of our partner organizations. We appreciated them sharing that out. We got 1,469 responses. And, you know, what we learned that is that parks and trails are essential to maintaining health all the time, but especially right now during COVID, we saw a majority of folks saying that they use the trails specifically to get exercise and to improve their mental health. We had multiple comments and quotes about folks saying, you know, these were a lifeline for me. I, these prevented me from going crazy inside. Um, parks and trails were just really helping people get through the last year and all of the changes that happened with people's lives. So, um, you know, we saw, we asked people what they like to do out on trails and there's so many things you can do in our parks and trails, which is really, uh, people really appreciate that diversity of recreation opportunity here. You know, it's not just walk on a trail, you can, you know, play sports, you can uh, visit the greenhouses, there's dog parks, off leash dog trails, all sorts of things people like to do. And trails and parks also allowed people to explore and try new things during COVID when lots of other things were closed. So um, we had 31% of our respondents said they tried a new outdoor activity um, during COVID. And people told us what they tried, a lot of winter activities, as you can see, winter biking and skiing and ice skating. Um, I think we did the survey uh, in February, so winter is on people's minds, but um, that's great. We love to see people out, you know, in the darkest months and the darkest season, the coldest season, getting out and trying something new. And, you know, Lee Hart also has some great data about um, just gear sales and how this is also being reflected in, in the business community that people are trying new, new stuff, getting new gear. We, um, again, you know, people are exploring new parts of Anchorage. Over half of our respondents said they visited a new park or trail during COVID-19. So people are, you know, looking for new experiences. We have so many things to offer and spaces to offer in town. And we were happy to see that people were getting out and trying new, new places. And this was uh, the question we were really interested to know. So we asked people specifically, do you visit parks and trails more? less or about the same as you did before COVID-19. And 55% said either, you know, that they visit either parks or trails more than they, they used to before COVID. So this is again, just validating some of that count data that we have access to, validating what we're seeing with our own eyes and um, just confirming that people are getting out more often. We also ask people where they are most likely to go during this time. So what parks and trails do you visit? And the most, um, you know, lots of different parks, but um, the most common trail systems that were named were first and foremost, the far, far North Bicentennial and BLM Campbell Tract area here in East Anchorage. 33% um, of folks said this is where they go most often, um, in, you know, in the last year. And so that's huge. You know, there's so many, it's a, you know, one of our biggest parks, it offers a lot of different types of trails, a lot of space for folks to do different activities, dog mushing, skiing, single track. Um, and so people were naming all different parts of this park, including the Abbott Loop Community Park, Service, Hillside, Hilltop, um, and BLM as well in the Campbell Airstrip, which is here uh, on the left side of this orange part. Um, we also saw about 25% of our respondents naming the coastal trail as somewhere they like to visit most often. So this is awesome. It's not just a destination for tourists. Our locals are enjoying this multi-use trail as well. And Kincaid Park too was quite frequently named. 18% of people said they like to go to Kincaid most often. And um, so really when we look at this, what we're learning is that people are driving to these parks and trails where they have a lot of space. Um, from other folks, they're able to social distance, they feel safe, they, um, you know, there's multi-use trails, so there's um, lots of different options, and these trails are beautiful, and they offer, um, you know, that scenic quality and that importance for your mental health, um, which people were really taking advantage of in the last year. And so again, we asked, you know, what, how people feel about parks, and 90% um, strongly agreed that parks, trails, and rec facilities improve their quality of life in Anchorage, and 
you know, that's true for me as well. I'm someone who actually moved back to Anchorage during the pandemic from a, a bigger city. I grew up here and I was uh, getting a graduate degree in Montreal, which is a beautiful city, but I just realized during COVID that, you know, there's nowhere else quite like Anchorage as far as getting access to nature on a daily basis. So we have a lot of quotes from people with that similar experience. Um, just this is the reason they live in Anchorage is because of this infrastructure we have. We also ask people specifically if they value parks more or about the same or less than they did before COVID. And 62% um, specifically said they value parks, trails, and rec uh, facilities more than they did before COVID. And, you know, we just have a lot of quotes that help illustrate why this may be. Um, this one is, you know, one of my favorites. Parks and trails were open during the lockdowns, allowing my family to continue participating in the activities we have always done. So folks are able to maintain routine during, you know, when things are crazy and everything's changing. Parks and trails were this lifeline and, um, you know, Anchorage, I think we, we see that we were well prepared to receive this increase in, in use. And um, uh, I think that just reflects well in our community. So I'm gonna transition now and show you guys a, a tool that one of our planners put together um, to, to show everyone what is on the ballot proposition six. So it just talks about the uh, projects that are on here. So I'll show you how to get here as well online. If you're on our Muni homepage, um, there's a bunch of colorful uh, squares and there's a maps square. Um, if you click on the map square, you're in the maps and uh, apps gallery or the maps and data gallery. You can find the parks and recreation gallery here. Um, and I encourage you to just check all these out. These are all such cool maps that uh, my coworker has put together and worked on. Um, but the, we've just added this parks and rec bond map gallery. So this gives you historic information about um, what's been on previous year's bonds and um, this year as well. So um, if you click this little uh, square in the corner, it uh, directs you to the 2021 ballot proposition six. So is everyone seeing this? Okay, looks good on your screen. Diana's nodding. Good. All right. And please, um, you know, we're not a very big group. So if you do have a question, just raise your hand or use the chat. I can see those in my um, other screen too. So I'll just walk you through um, what's on here um, and talk about the projects briefly and then I'll, and I'll hand it over to, to Diana. Um, so you can see we've got projects all over Anchorage. Um, this one we've located here at the Fairview Rec Center, but it, it does include some other locations around town, but facility safety upgrades are included on here. Um, so health safety and ADA upgrade requirements, including the lead paint abatement, wheelchair access and security system installs. So kind of improving some of our well-loved facilities here. Taku Lake Park is on here. That's a really neat project that um, is basically implementing things that were identified in the master plan process, um, including an inclusive playground, which um, you know, is something Anchorage is well known really nationally for um, kind of being on the cutting edge of inclusivity and in playgrounds and installing that uh, those new amenities. Um, it also includes some upgrades to the skate park trails, picnic areas, and other general amenities. So this map here is um, the South Taku Lake access point. Um, so you can just see some of the areas that um, we're gonna be working on and improving. Over in East Anchorage, um, Russian Jack Springs Park safety and ADA improvements is on here as well. This is a project I'm working on and uh, I feel, passionately about I grew up using Russian Jack Park and um, I just am excited to see where this park goes in the next in the next decade or two and um, so on the bond is uh, implementation of master plan priorities, uh, safety improvements, ADA access, upgrading these facilities we we love and that are well used um, and also doing some important trail rehab and um, wayfinding and signage that will include indigenous place names for the trail system which is being um, Park Foundation is a, a leader in uh, helping us implement that all over town in different spots. So we're excited about that. Um, back over here, the Northeast Connector Trail. This is a neat project, an AMATS. So uh, it's an active transportation project, uh, a new trail boardwalk and bridge. 
that's providing this non-motorized connection um, from a northeast Anchorage neighborhood to um, the far north Bicentennial Park. So again, as we're seeing like so much attention going to far north park right now and so many people using it and getting out there and exploring it. So um, good to see some increased connection there. Um, Coastal Trail to Ship Creek Trail connection, another Another one of those um, re remaining gaps in the Moose Loop. Um, this project includes the planning, design, and construction of this connection between Coastal and Ship Creek. And this funding is a match um, that's uh, to the funds allocated through AMATS. Chance New Park, um, I got to see this park for the, I was out of Anchorage for a few years. And so I, it's just such a beautiful park. The, the first phase is, um, complete, but this is phase two on the Prop 6 this year. So continuing these improvements um, that are identified in the master plan, bridges, trails, a dog park, and um, just other amenities and upgrades to this really nice area. Fish Creek Trail to the Ocean is another one of our AMATS um, non-motorized uh, trail connections and a, a matching project as well, a federal match. Um, the Chester Creek Complex, uh, again, just some really needed upgrades, health and safety, electrical fencing and ADA access. So lots of, um, you know, improving what we love and already have in town. Campbell Creek Trail, um, continuing the resurfacing and again, um, carrying out that wayfinding and signage and indigenous place naming efforts that um, Park Foundation is helping and leading the way on. And as you're using these story maps, just, you know, click around, see what you can, um, it's fun to play around with these and um, really good learning tool. And um, if you need to share with any of your um, colleagues, um, they're great tools. So again, some more um, area-wide upgrades to athletic fields all over town. We've located this one over in near um, Ruth Arcan Park, but it'll be a couple of different uh, places in town. South Anchorage Sports Park. Um, so this will be constructing a new bike park and uh, that will include the youth skills course, which is really fun. Uh, bike parks are an awesome way to get more people out. Yuri Park, I've got to visit this park for the first time this year. It's such a neat little pocket along the Fish Creek Trail. And this is um, a project that was identified through ongoing engagement with the Spinard Community Council. Um, so those improvements are there. It's really pretty, um, forested area back there. And KFQD Park, again, is another one um, that the community um, really has defined these improvements needed, including the renovations to the playground and ADA access. So um, that was just kind of a walkthrough of what is on Prop 6 and um, how to use this tool that uh, we've put together. Um, and I'll let Diana talk to you a little bit more about some of the stories behind these projects. Thank you, Nicolette. I'm Diana Rhodes with the Anchorage Park Foundation. <clears throat> and so should I? Okay, thanks. Um, the Park Foundation mission is we're basically a fundraising organization, fundraising and ad advocacy, and we are the nonprofit partner to the municipality of Anchorage Parks and Recreation. So all of the park projects that we work on are on municipal lands. We have several programs. Um, the Anchorage Trails Initiative is how we are doing our work around the Moose Loop and trying to get more people out to improve their health on our trail system. We every year are the advocacy organization for the park bonds and we have had a lot of success. Thank you Anchorage voters for voting for the park bonds year after year. Um, it's been fantastic, but we don't want to um, not talk about them a lot and talk about their success and talk about how important they are because they are $4 million basically a year that go to keeping these uh, maintenance and new pro projects for parks and trails. And we just, we need all of them. Other programs we do that I just put in here today because they all go together 
uh, youth employment in parks, the inclusive playgrounds, the community challenge grants, and the schools on trails program, trying to get more young people outside, uh, understanding the proximity of, to parks and trails from their schools. And the next slide. One of the things that's cool about parks and trails, and I love this quote by Frederick Law Olmsted. Um, he's the father of American landscape architecture, but no single park, no matter how large and how well designed, would provide citizens with the beneficial influences of nature. Instead, parks need to be linked to one another and to surrounding residential neighborhoods. And when we realize that the Moose Loop, um, you know, could connect up together and link up about, it's about 30 parks. So 30 parks are actually on the Moose Loop system. And then the access to these points uh, for all across the city is what's so exciting. Just that, that we've had the Tony Knowles Coastal Trail since 1986, but didn't really realize until last year, the year before, that it looks like a moose. It's just that you'll see the ears here are at mile five of the Tony Knowles Coastal Trail. And then at mile 10 is the nose. And it just, it looks like a moose. So we are just branding it as the moose loop to highlight, to have people understand, to be able to look at the map and see, wow, we have this connected park and trail system in our city. It's amazing. And you can actually visit all of these outdoor experiences by just understanding that, that connectivity of the moose. And this year, or this, just all of the, the it's a, not only for locals, but for visitors, we see these kinds of trail systems as being an attraction for uh, people from out of state to come here and stay one more day and spend their money in Anchorage and then launch these other trips to uh, north and south of here. But to have a destination trail is something that most really cool communities have. So uh, this is Anchorage's part of that connected trail system and a, and a destination trail. We just made this in just our most recent newsletter. If you're not on our newsletter list, please sign up on our website. But we just did this pullout map. It's got the moose loop on it, but then it just highlights some of the many amazing trails and, and parks that we have along the system. And when we view the, the system as a whole like this, it also gives us opportunities to create new trail connections. So uh, one of the ones that were worked on last year about um, was the what we're calling the mountains to the sea and trying to get from Glen Alps parking lot at Chugach State Park through Far North Bicentennial Park and then down onto the Chester Creek Trail and taking it all the way to downtown. So you can get dropped off up in the mountains and then ride your bike, right? You can ride, you can ski there now, but uh, in the summertime riding your bike and getting all the way downtown to have dinner. But today we wanna go behind the scenes on some of the specific park bond projects. On the next slide with Tom Bronga. I just went out there and checked out this one um, this is the Northeast Connector Trail, and, and Tom, in 2015, applied for one of the Anchorage Park Foundation and Rasmussen Foundation grant opportunities every two years. Um, in 2015, he applied uh, representing the Scenic Foothills Community Council, and at that time, he thought this was going to be a small uh, a park project, just a, a soft surface trail. Um, but it just, it turns into a wetlands and then you realize it's a wetlands and then it costs more money. So the community challenge grant was for $40,000 to get started and hired the youth employment and parks to do one section of the trail with a lot of volunteer commitment and involvement from the scenic foothills neighbors. And then it moved on to 
uh, this opportunity to see if we could get it into the to the list for the transportation planning and leverage some of those federal dollars. So it's been 1 million in federal funds so far, and then and we'll just uh, keep working towards that. It's about a $3 million project, but the, the federal funds are coming for this. So this park bond uh, will leverage these federal dollars. Move on. And this really is an exciting connection because there's, if you come from, let's say you were on the trail system coming from uh, Eagle River, you can get on the Glen Highway Trail, and then you come up onto Muldoon, and there really isn't a good connection. So this is part of this bigger plan of how do you make these important connections to all of our trail systems so you have this safe way to connect. Now this one will get from the Regal Mountain Drive, which is right there on the Tudor Curve, and it's just once you get in there, I just did it. And it was like we had our snowshoes because it had just had that big dump. And it was just, oh my gosh, I don't even know, two feet of snow, three feet of snow in some places, but it's along the Campbell Creek. And there were like beaver dams. And it's just a wild place with those views where you just saw Tom. But once you get out there, you kind of really don't even notice where you are. I mean, it's sort of close to Muldoon Road, but not really. It feels really wild. Um, it's a new connection for the Benny Benson Secondary School over there, uh, a new connection to uh, access Campbell Airstrip Road where you can get on the pathway there and get back into Far North Bicentennial Park. But if you wanna go snowshoeing, if you wanna go skiing, if you wanna watch the uh, dog mushers out there. There's a dog mush trail out there and it's just really, it's fantastic views. So the next one, thank you, Tom. Tom Bronga, amazing. And then Christy Wood, she has been a super leader on Chanchnu Muldoon Park for gosh, a decade. And this last year uh, in the park bond that passed, it was the phase one and um, they were able to plant trees that she started, all these trees at her home, and then transferred those trees. And there was a tree planting celebration um, over at the Chanchnu Muldoon. And it's a little bit different uh, connection over there. But again, it was another one that started as a community challenge grant. And then it was like, wow, this is an amazing place. We need to get it on the park bonds. And so getting it on the park bonds. And then once you got it on the park bonds, you're like, well, we've got this approved master plan. We've got this on the park bonds. Voters have supported it. And then we applied for a land and water conservation fund. And when I say we, I mean the community as a whole, <laughs> parks and recreation, uh, the neighborhood organizers. And so moving on to the next slide. The Chanchnu Muldoon Park, if you have not been there, okay, so the regular park is right there at Muldoon and Debar Road. So if you're coming down Debar, you take the right and you can go right into the Chanchnu Muldoon Park, the regular part of the park. But if you're to get into this particular section, you need to go left at Muldoon and head north and come around, I see it's on Boston Court. So you go around the Boys and Girls Club onto Boston Court and you get on the other side of, of Chester Creek. And then that there's a the little diagram on the left is the is are all the different park features that will be funded on this park bond. And the future, there will be a bridge that will cross over uh, Chester Creek to go into the, the phase one section of the park, which is where you see those skaters down below. That's what's, what exists today. And then on the top left of the screen is the, the park plan that we're moving forward on. But yeah, it's leveraging all these dollars by just having a, a community council person, a neighborhood leader who steps up and says, we need to make a difference and then it moves forward into the bonds and moves forward into leveraging these, these federal dollars. And so Chanchnu Muldoon, if you move to the next slide, Chanchnu is actually, um, there was no um, Chester, there was no Mr. or Mrs. Chester. Uh, Chester was just a mispronunci mispronounced, mispronounced 
version of the Danina word. The Danina word uh, is Chanchnu. So Chanchnu is Chester Creek. Um, it is the creek that flows all the way from the mountains there over into uh, Westchester Lagoon and out to the ocean. So we did work with the native village of Eklutna and the Alaska Native Heritage Center and the Rasmussen Foundation and we're raising money to highlight the indigenous culture uh, and the indigenous place names of of important parks and trails throughout Anchorage. We're really excited about this project and some of the park bond projects on the list will include some funding for, uh, for establishing these place names. So they're not, it's not uh, delineated in the park bond, but it's within the funding of individual parks that we will be able to pay for some of this signage. And it was a local artist and they used the fire bag is the, is the, is the art and, and it's a metal wrap that wraps around these huge wooden, wooden posts. And if you've been out to, to Chanchnu Muldoon Park, they do have that, uh, that one of those signs, the very first sign is there and we'll be in, installing another one this summer at Westchester Lagoon which is a really fun project. And I will we'll end on this slide just to say that, um, actually moving on to the next slide, but we do want to invite you if, if any of the folks here uh, would like to come and learn more about another project, we are going to be down uh, meeting at Elderberry Park tomorrow. So Thursday, March 25th at 4 p.m. And Erin Leggett with the Native Village of Eklutna is going to lead a walk with us to go scope out the Ship Creek Trail, opportunities for the Ship Creek Trail expansion and what that means for downtown revitalization. There is a bronze sculpture of a Denina leader, uh, a fisherwoman, uh, her name is Olga. And there is this beautiful bronze sculpture out at the small boat launch which is at the end of the Ship Creek Trail. So we'll start at Elderberry, we'll walk down the coastal trail, connect up with the uh, Ship Creek Trail at C Street and walk out. It's about three miles, three miles round trip walk. We're starting at four o'clock. We're gonna hear from uh, Jason Motika, who's with 49th State Brewery. They own, uh, uh, the boardroom downtown and there's so we're thinking about a staircase and new connections as we get planning on this Ship Creek Trail expansion to link the Ship Creek Trail to the Coastal Trail. One of the ideas is actually come from the small boat launch across all the way to Elderberry Park so you can avoid the, the railroad tracks by coming in a straight shot from the small boat launch to Elderberry Park. And then you'd have this new sort of loop to downtown uh, and, and to the boardroom area, to the railroad area, to the Ship Creek. So you can go on the, on the coastal trail and ride your bike and then get on the, the Ship Creek Trail and then and come back around to Elderberry Park. So we're really excited about the opportunities that this bond package offers all across the city, beautiful new features, beautiful new trails to connect us two together. And we'll I'll end with that, please vote yes. We have until April 6, uh, the ballots have been mailed. If you didn't receive your ballot, you can go to the call, the voter hotline, at the Division of Elections, Municipality of Anchorage Division of Elections. And in the, the week of April 6th, they will have, they will open uh, in-person voting at City Hall. So you could go in and see where, where your ballot went. If you didn't receive it, uh, you could do it that way, but otherwise check your mailbox and hopefully um, vote yes on the park bonds. And we can open it up for questions if anybody has any questions. I have a question. Yeah, go ahead, Charles. Um, so 
one thing I was really excited about was the pedestrian uh, plan that was finished, or I think it maybe is in a draft phase. Um, and the proposal of a bike trail over Lake Otis to connect um, the Campbell Creek Trail. Um, and this is pretty exciting because before you couldn't even get under the new sewer, but now you can. And so this Lake Otis connection is the only thing kind of preventing it being continuous from um, Diamond High School all the way up to Muldoon now. So I guess uh, I'm wondering kind of like, where does that fit into your um, priority? Or is it more of now just kind of like such as a, a bigger project and goes over roads? Is it less of a parks project and more of like a, um, a roads project? No, it's still definitely a major priority and it's the, you know, connecting the Campbell Creek Trail. It is the, the last priority, but I mean, the last, you know, big linkage for, for the Moose Loop. And one of the things that, that is happening is it does need to get on that active transportation list, the AMATS list. There are already these other two projects. The Ship Creek Trail is one project that's moving forward and the Fish Creek Trail to the ocean is the other one. So those two trail projects are on the list. And as we slowly pay for those and get those done, I think that's when we're going to see the, the Campbell Creek connection get on the list. It's just there's we have so many needs, unfortunately. But yeah, we have been advocating for that like crazy. We're um, you know, meeting with our federal congressional delegation. There's opportunities uh, for this upcoming federal transportation reauthorization bill in Congress and new money coming forward. So we have like a proposal that we've put in and just said, hey, um, this is a really important safety connection that we'd like to see get funded. So if there's any way to get a federal appropriation for that, we are, we're really working hard to try to make that happen. Um, barring an appropriation for roughly $9 million is what that, that bridge would cost. Um, we just have to sort of continue to advocate to get on the AMATS active transportation improvement program list. So thank you for bringing that up. It is, it's, it's, a, it's a major priority. Yeah, I will just, Diana covered it and um, Theo put another uh, question in the chat. I see Christina's hand is up. So we'll go to Christina after Theo. Um, so you asked, uh, has anyone thought about uh, adding that Ship Creek expansion effort um, to a small section that links up to the sidewalk that comes down from Government Hill? Um, our neighborhood would love to have a way to link to the coastal trail. And yes, Theo, um, this is on our radar. We, um, it's a project I just started to work on is the Government Hill Parks and Trails Master Plan. So it's actually quite unique. You know, Government Hill is such a cool, unique neighborhood in Anchorage and um, you guys have a neighborhood plan that was adopted by the assembly, which is unique uh, for all neighborhoods in Anchorage. And now you're going to have a neighborhood wide parks and trails master plan. So we're uh, working with a small group of folks from the Community Council and to put together kind of a priorities list um, of projects that you all want to see um, through Government Hill and improving that awesome park system that you have encircling your neighborhood. Um, again, this, you know, the crossing the railroad is um, kind of the, the big thing with, with this specific connection that you're speaking of. But um, so yeah, it's just one of those things that requires multi-agency efforts, lots of funding. Um, but if you want to get, you know, connected to the, to that effort, um, your community council is working on it. And I can provide you with some contacts. Um, anything else, Theo, you wanted to add? Hi, this is Theo here. Yeah, go ahead. Hi, um, just you mentioned the uh, the extension from the um, Ship Creek expansion over to the small boat harbor and the existing trail that runs down the hill from Government Hill almost goes all the way to the end right by where you would normally turn right to the port, which really isn't that far from the small boat harbor. 
I mean, I know people had talked before about running a uh, connection to the Ship Creek Trail, like kind of behind the railroad or somehow over or through it. But if you went around it to the other side there um, by the harbor, you could actually link it up from what the existing trail running down the hill directly to the to the small boat harbor. I guess you could just ride down the street too, but traffic's a little scary there on a bike coming down the hill. Sure. Yeah, I think what the, the advisory group working on this plan has really emphasized is like safe connections. Mm -hmm. um, connecting that last mile like you're talking about, um, just really making it that much more usable. And, you know, there's like so many interesting partnerships that can be formed around this. You know, you've got J-Bear folks who are driving in and out that way. Um, you know, maybe they'd also enjoy that non-motorized connection. So. Um, Neat, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Christina, wanna go ahead? Thanks, Nicolette. Greetings from beautiful Girdwood. It's always nice to see the success of the trail bonds. Uh, I've already voted and mailed in my ballot. So congratulations. Hopefully it'll be just as successful. I am here with a couple of different hats on today. I was one of the champions to uh, secure the funding and the consultant that is putting together our trails master plan here in Girdwood. We have a management plan which governs best management practices for the different trail types that we have, but we are incredibly fragmented in our small community and during COVID definitely saw a lot more Anchorageites coming down and recreating on our trails, which has had a negative impact on our very limited shoreside facilities. We don't have adequate parking, we don't have public restrooms, we barely have trash cans to keep up with some of the traffic that we get in. So uh, we're hoping that this master plan, once it's passed by the assembly uh, scheduled for fall of this year, potentially uh, puts us in the bucket to go after some additional uh, grants for better connectivity for multi-use trails as well as our single user trails. So just a, a heads up that that effort is ongoing. The second reason I am here is I have been intermittently involved with our cemetery plan uh, with Eagle River. Girdwood is exploring a cemetery and we would be combining forces to go after an Anchorage bond in 2022. Uh, that way we could uh, demonstrate the need to all Anchorage voters for the need for our two unique communities to have this. Both of the proposed designed concept plans are to have incredible interconnected trails through those cemeteries because they will not only be traditional but they're also some green plots and uh, some of the sites have some really great cultural uh, components and historic stuff like some old mining equipment in Girdwood because uh, it's uh, situated along Crow Creek Road. So the model that you follow for successful bonding is something that we would like to work with the Anchorage Park Foundation on in the future uh, so that we can utilize ArcGIS to move forward and, and greatly visually display the, the quality of, of what we're trying to pursue. So heads up on that one. The last one is, as I'm sure you guys are all aware of the Winter Creek Trail. Now, what you might not be aware of is that about five weeks ago, someone took out a hand-powered power tool and uh, broke the chain that was securing the cart and trespassed and took the cart across. It is not safe to do that um, due to COVID and a variety of other priorities that took the municipality's attention last year. We have not secured the materials for the additional safety parameters, nor have we come up with a good management model that basically it's an eye in the sky to catch people who take hand-powered drills out there and drill through machinery to do it. So we have funded through our Parks and Rec budget uh, at the Gerber Board of Supervisor level, a study through the Dubuté company who is our term contractor through the municipality, a review of the feasibility for the, uh, a, a new bridge to go in instead of using the handcart. As you know, with multi-agencies, that's going to be quite interesting given the fact that it's probably gonna be a bit of service for service land up there. Um, but just letting you guys know that as we look to uh, review bridges, I don't think it will be the multi-million dollar bridge that you spoke of earlier. I believe it's Tudor, correct? Um, it'll definitely be smaller, but it does have to carry through with 
significant snow load, uh, erosion, and a lot of the other climate change components that we are seeing on a very acute basis in the Girdwood Valley. So I wanted to say thank you for informing me of how you've changed the narrative on the importance of these trails and provided more than just live, work, play. Um, you know, everything from a cute little moose to, to things in between. It's really helpful, but just know that Gerwood's moving forward on a lot of initiatives that I think could uh, leverage some of the success that the Anchorage Park Foundation has had to date. So thanks for that and I'll stand by for any questions. It's really exciting, congratulations. That sounds fantastic. Yeah, a couple of meetings have been kind of terse. Not all of us in Grid would agree with how trails could, should be used or have been used. And there's a lot of trespassing too, because we don't have very much code enforcement for the um, Heritage Land Banks meeting uh, lands that are down here. So there's a lot of, uh, well, nobody's here to tell me no, so I'll just ride my snow machine on it until a neighbor has to call and, and report somebody to the police. So. It, it's gotten a lot of hackles up, but at the same time, it's growth and it's hopefully going to provide for some sustainable infrastructure for future trail opportunities. Yeah, that's great. Thanks for sharing. I, uh, like I said, I'm sort of new to the department, but I'm really um, intrigued to learn about these projects and hope to, you know, cross paths in the future. Um, Chris uh, had a comment in the box as well. Could we use Muni COVID money to collect more data over the summer? Neighborhood specific uh, interns at parks using counters. Um, yeah, that's a intriguing su suggestion as well. We definitely have talked in our um, in our department, especially with me on board now, and I have a little bit of background in trail counter data. Um, so we're definitely looking at expanding how we could expand um, our data collection because we just, it's really important, you know, a survey of 1400 folks in Anchorage is good, but it is still a self-selective survey. It's not truly representative. It's not hard to data. So we'd like to be able to um, really tell good stories and, you know, do pre and post measurements. Um, that would be a really wonderful way to demonstrate the value added of construction or trail improvements, um, these things you're seeing on the bonds. Um, so yes, I think that's on our minds. I appreciate the suggestion and hopefully you'll see more data in the future. Okay, well, thanks everybody. If there's, if there's nothing else, we sure appreciate your time and um, support. And maybe we'll see you tomorrow at Elderberry Park at four o'clock. And other than that, please vote yes and tell your friends. Thanks everyone. It was nice to meet you all. I'm gonna stop the recording now. Thank you.